I'm Ty, and I'm going off script with Paul Knobs, a reality TV star and model. Going on that show opens doors but closes a lot of doors. Everyone has their own reasons to go on. I mean, is anyone looking for love? I don't think so. This idea of what people want, fame, it's not really what it's cracked up to be. People do become vicious. The public will turn around and say, yeah, but you knew exactly what you were getting yourself into. You don't know what that, like, five minutes of fame is until you've, you're in it. Yeah, the aftercare is not amazing. You know, you'll speak to a couple of people, but they don't check up on you. It can be really savage on, your, on mental health. If I was completely honest with myself, which it took a while, I was like, fuck, I'm depressed. I'm in a, in a pretty bad state here. Mopsy, thanks for coming on the show. Yes, you're welcome. Third time lucky. <laughs> Finally got you down here after you rescheduling a hundred times. Tough man to get hold of you, huh? Uh, no, I just don't want to prioritise my time for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how much I want to give away on here. Oh, is it like that, is it? Yeah. God, no, up. I think, um, I, I actually, I like podcasts. I think they're good. I think they're a lot more interesting to to listen to these days I think if people are honest about them mm. I know we've had wicked chats and I know some of that obviously you probably won't repeat here but genu genuinely some of it will probably be value to people out there I feel yeah I hope so there's a lot I mean everyone's got a story and what they've learned but there's a lot of what some mistakes and 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 things I've done right mm. in which if I can help someone or make them decide on the right choice then you know then good yeah. Obviously, we're going to touch on the whole Love Island vibe. Yep. But before we get there, what were you doing before that? I was, well, I'm a carpenter by trade. So nice. I was doing, but that was years ago. And then I so went So what you're into, saying is those yeah. sweet hands can actually build some stuff. They are. They're probably a little bit more soft now. <laughs> <laughs> Moisturizer. Chippy, that's cool. Yeah. I actually, do you know, and I, I tell people what I do, I think more, most people get, well, that I get a rise out of that more than anything mm. because um, I think most people are impressed with that. But I was doing modeling and acting, uh, more so modeling, which was good. I was, I think I hit the, the modeling days of when it was uh, kind of the last like cliche modeling where you had an agency, you go around casting, yeah, uh, you could travel, you know, agencies would, re would really want you to go and, and stay somewhere else. It's a lot harder now. And Do you think? Yeah, I mean, everyone's a model. My, my little cousin's actually a model. She's just okay. moved up to Manchester to do to like sort of follow that dream, as it were. Yeah, but it's quite a funny industry, isn't it? Yeah, it's so hard now. There's so many. Whereas it used to be the same kind of people floating around. I'd go to castings and see the same kind of guys, and then I'd go maybe to Milan or South Africa or something and see the same guys there. So you would all be working, and then you you pretty much see all the same guys on uh campaigns and that but there's just an array of people like, well, there's just such a broad range of people mm. and social media is like changed the industry slash killed the kind of cliche modeling industry yeah but it's hard now and the money's not as good by far i mean really was, yeah but i mean it's saturated isn't it as you said because it's it's quite easy to become i guess an instagram model as such yeah and get some sort of influencer um stuff paid to post and those sort of bits weren't around when you probably first started modeling were they no they well, weren't quite yeah, old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't give anyone my age away <laughs> you look great for 40 mate thanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what about acting Did you do anything that we'd know or no, i used to do uh, i was more uh, i was more modeling mm -hmm. and then I, I tried to pursue the acting stuff i did a couple of bits did the son of god um nice. the bible series and then I did a few short films and it was something that I wanted to pursue, but modeling was just there. It was working three, four, five days a week, every week. Was it paying good. better at the time as well? Yeah, it was really good money. Yeah. But now to get good money, you have to have social media following. Or, it's interesting. Know. So in those days, I guess if you were a brand, if I was a brand looking for, I could pick as well. I don't even know if that's PC anymore, right? So in those days you could have said, I want a guy and looking like this for my brand. I don't think you can do no, that you anymore, still do. You still get you briefs. Can. Yeah, you still get briefs. Okay, I had fine. one the other day and they wanted... Um, I didn't know if that would be PC with the current world we live in, but I guess it's got to be in, acceptable in a modelling world. No, I guess. I mean, you can't... You you know, you want to cover um, 
all ethnicities yeah. in that in that sense to make it inclusive, which you have to be specific about that if you're casting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just it's a whole different world now. I don't really love it anymore. It was fun back then. It was fun. I mean, walking around in castings, um, you know, the jobs, and then you get flown away on. I'd get flown away all the time. Every month I was flying away somewhere. I quite like the travel element of it. Like you just said, that if you're flying from country to country and seeing everywhere. Yeah. Quite like that side oh, of it. Oh, you'd go and do stay. So I did LA, I've done New York, South Africa, Milan. Um, I can't remember anywhere else I've been, which I have been places. But yeah, did it was I great. You'd go in, there and you just I... do like three, like two, three, four months. Uh, and it was like a little bubble. Hmm. And it was fun for what it was. Yeah. Could I do modeling, Jason? Everyone's a model these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you were a chippy, then you were doing modeling and acting. Yeah. How does the Love Island thing come around? Because you were in one of the earlier seasons as well, right? Season four. four. Yeah. I was in New York and I was signed to. Uh, You're on a shoot. With, I was York. with Wilhelmina. Yeah. Over there. And I was living there. And then. I, Wilhelmina, I, I think that's who my cousin's with. Really? Yeah. They're all over the world. Yeah. They're okay, cool. Anyway. Yeah, and then I'd, I'd previously been contacted by ITV anyway. And for the same show? No, for something else. I can't even remember what the other show was. Memory's gone. <laughs> long time ago. Yeah, it's, it is a long time ago. You're bringing up old wounds. Sorry, man. <laughs> Yeah, and then I, uh, I actually, I was on, I was on holiday. I was in Mykonos, and then uh, I had a three-week holiday planned, but one in Mykonos, one in Croatia, and one in Beirut. Mm. And they called me on the day I got to Mykonos, and I just sat down for lunch, and I said, "I bet this is Love Island." Lo and behold, it was. And they said, "You've got to leave tomorrow." Damn, that thing. last minute. Yeah. So you've already done some interviews and bits before that, then? No, no, no. Oh no, I had, I had done, I'd spoken to them. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then... So you had an inkling they may call? Yeah, but this was for, for, for something previous that I'd done. It wasn't even, it wasn't even for Love Island. Wow. And I, honestly, I'd never even seen Love Island, hadn't watched it. I knew it was a big show, but I'd never seen I'd never seen one episode of it. And then, yeah, I got this call and I said, oh, I bet this is Love Island. It was. And they said, yeah, you've got to leave tomorrow. But the whole idea of that is you can't sit on it. So they... Because if it's bombshells of people coming in, you can't sit on your phone and tell people and then the press You're get hold of You're about to go in, yeah. So that's why they, they tell you you've got to leave the next day. Anyway, I was pissed. <laughs> I've just got on this three-week holiday. <laughs> they want to do this. But, um, and I spoke to, there was, a, there was a few of us and we had the conversation, shall I do it, shall I not? 60% of them said no. 40% was yes. And I actually said no. I said, I don't want to do it. So Really? Yeah. Why did you say no? Just wasn't for me. It's not. It was never really my bag. It was never something what, reality I wanted TV? to do. Yeah, reality TV. Because obviously acting, you had a bit of a thing for. Yeah. So it would make sense to get in onto TV somehow. Yeah, of course. But it was an opportunity that came up, and I'd, I'd sat on that idea for a while. It was you know, it's an opportunity. Do I pass it up? Do I not? Um, did you? And speak I still actually hadn't watched an episode. I was like, I'm not even going to watch it. Okay, let me rephrase that. If you had watched it, do you think you would have gone on? I don't know. Tough to say. Yeah. Did you ask any around, anyone around you that's close to you whether you should go on or not? Yeah. Like, did you expect... Yeah, it was a bit of a 50-50. Time, no, it was a bit of 50-50. So were you just asking the people that you were there with? Oh, that was a, stre oh, it's a stressful couple of hours. They didn't give me long. And, you know, you're deliberating on, on so many things. But... Pros and cons. It could this. be could be a life changer it could could not be uh, you could be on on tv for five minutes and it could absolutely ruin your career you know i was doing modeling so i didn't want i didn't want it to have really a say on that so i knew that if i went on it had to be for the right reasons mm -hmm. and you know everyone has their own reasons to go on i mean is anyone looking for love i don't i don't think so i think it's you go on there for an experience and if you find someone great if you don't you know you've, you've had an experience I think, it's got, I think I think everyone's got to be realistic about it. Mm. I try to be as realistic about the process as possible. Well, it's not a process. It was like it was an opportunity that was given to me. You know, take it. Yeah. And 
I didn't want to look back and go, I should have done that. That was why I ended up doing it. I think that's a fair thing, fair way to think though. And I think a lot of people would have taken the same opportunity like you. I think most people did. Yeah. I, they, t- they told me at the time, they said, no, no one said no to this yet. Well, and you and you said and no. And I said no, yeah. And I, but it wasn't, it just wasn't right for me. I was older as well, I was 31. And it just didn't really fit in with my life. And I was going back to New York. And uh, yeah, my agency just said, look, do it. If you don't do very well, <laughs> you can just come, out, <laughs> come back out here. And if you do, make hay whilst the sun shines. Was there anyone that you were modelling for at the time that were quite big that you'd have to deliberate with as a brand? You know, like in case they thought, I don't want him to be. Yeah, well, okay, this is, this is a bit, well, ended up being a bit of a problem going on that show opens doors but closes a lot of doors mm-hmm. so a lot of the brands that I was working with before didn't didn't want to touch me got you just because it wasn't necessarily me they said like or from being on the show they said you were great but unfortunately there are other people on the show which kind of are not great are not so great and it just they don't want it associated with their brand which is fair enough so you're kind of saying yes to a lot of smaller brands or some massive brands, but just really not who I thought that I would were for me. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. So it was quite tough because I was in the industry before of doing the modeling. I think when you come out of that and then your whole area changes, I think it was a bit of a hard pill to swallow. I can imagine. Yeah. I guess you become the Love Island guy. I know we've spoken about it. My God, Paul from Love Island. He, haunted me really yeah which is so interesting to hear because so many people i think in this modern day and age are are yearning for that yeah with instagram that sort of celebrity that being famous being known and obviously you've got that from this show but you're sort of thinking i don't want this like this yeah honestly from love island i actually had a a very bad year afterwards um we'll touch on that yeah down the line but overall how was your experience in there in Love Island. actually in the villa in in the villa yeah the forget villa. forget coming out before or after now just those uh, 10 12 14 days whatever you're in there for obviously you shut off from the earth the world you've got no mobile phone is that right yeah being in there it was it was, it was fun that it's a bit of a an interesting one because i when i got to um when i got to spain i had to i had to then watch all of the episodes to catch up I have oh, to they fig- make you watch it all. Well, I have to catch up. I have to find what's going on, who's with who, what's going on. So I watched of it. Course. And then after you've watched it, you know, when you turn up there, you're like, oh, wow, this is it. So it was quite a, it was quite fun to to be there. But I'd be, been on sets and that before, so I wasn't totally wowed. Mm. But I'd gone in and it was, it, it was fun. But I'm not a gossip queen and I just can't be bothered to get involved in everyone else's drama. So it probably, hindsight probably wasn't the show for me in that sense. You know, and they, you, you really do have to get involved. I guess so, to, even to make good viewing for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just so relaxed and easygoing, which I think I am. <laughs> Some people may differ. No, no, I agree with that. So you didn't call anyone to have a chat by the fire or any of that? No, but you have to. But then, <laughs> you know, they they will say, can can you go off and, and talk about that? So it's real in that sense where they're, you're having an honest chat about something, but they they might ask you to go and have a chat. I was going to ask you this actually. So like we only see obviously, uh, do you remember what was it? An hour a night or something like that? I think we saw as a public. Yeah. This is 24 hours cut into an hour. Yeah. So how edited is it? As in, are they really changing that narrative? So when we see you talking to someone or an argument or something, is that genuinely going on in the house, uh, in, the, in, the, in the villa or is everyone cool and they've made it for good viewing? Yeah, there is. For sure, uh, it, was a, it was a long time ago, but yeah, there is for sure dramas in there, and there's like emotions are uh, heightened and stuff. But you think like real drama, real emotion? Yeah, there is some real drama television. goes on. There actually wasn't much when. Oh no, there was a bit of I think with Alex, Doctor Alex, and Alex Sandra. Of course, he was in your season. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, I, there, I think actually at one point there was a drama going on, and they asked me to get involved, and I said. I'm not getting involved in it. I don't care about it. And I just don't care to get involved. And I'm not going to look, I'm not, I'm not going to be this person that comes in, looks like the bad guy. You're not doing it to me. 
how do they tell you to do it? Is it in an earpiece or like you they have, do they come you, in and see you? Or? Yeah, they, they'll ask you to go and and speak about something. But you have to be, I don't know. You can look at it. I probably, I think too much anyway. So if there was a lot that was going on, I would think, well, you know, how's that going to look? It's not going to look good at all because it's not how I am. Mm. Uh, and I don't want it to be me to be perceived in that way. So, uh, I suppose if you're an overthinker as well, yeah, you, you, yeah, you are, yeah. And then there's some things that you say, and then you stress out because you go, "Oh my god, it's too got late, it. they've got it, they've got it, <laughs> it's on camera." Yeah. yeah, if they want to use it, and, and it, you've it obviously can, signed, and it can really mess with you. You know, you can. Do you have you ever watched any of the episodes back since you've been out? Yeah, it took a while for me to watch. Did you to, like, not decide. straight away then? Not as soon as you got out, no, you didn't no, want to no. see how you did, how you looked. No, no. How did you feel watching yourself back? Can you remember? Yeah, funny enough, I watched one was on uh, on my friend's TV the other day. I looked at his planner, and I watched it, <laughs> uh, and I just forwarded it to the bits that I was on just to see. But yeah, cringe a little, uh, yeah, a bit. It's funny because you know you think of yourself in some some way, but even when I watched it, I was like, it doesn't really portray who I really am. And a lot of people said I was quiet, and I'm there every day all day talking about stuff. I was talking to Dr. Alex about some really interesting stuff, but they just, they don't want that in it. They want no. dramas, they want relationships. And that was the, probably the two things that I don't want to sit and talk about all day. Well, you've got, as you said, it's 24 hours into an hour. Yeah. You've got adverts included. Then you've got, everyone needs a bit of airtime. Yeah. So it's three minutes a day you might be on to yeah. try and portray yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's got to be tough. And then afterwards you're Paul from Love Island. I honestly hated it afterwards. I think this idea of what people want fame, it's not really all it's cracked up to be. It really isn't. And for a year afterwards, um, I really struggled with it. And everywhere I went, people up with their phones, um, I'd have people saying, like, uh, I knew a journalist and they were saying, oh, Paul, your name's floating around in here all the time. And I'm like, about what? And, you know, people, people do become vicious. And so you become a little bit, well, you, you're trying to figure out who you can trust. That was a, that was a struggle for me because, you know, you, you do think you can trust people until. And is there ever the thing where you kind of forget it's being filmed? Do you see what I mean? Because you're obviously, you're in there 24 hours a day. Yeah. There must be pockets of time where you're just chatting to someone, you completely forget that yeah, you do, yeah. they could actually use that, edit it. You've obviously signed that right away when you go in the show. Yeah. I was telling you this earlier. I think they do look out for you. So if you say anything which is politically incorrect or something which is would hurt you on the outside, I think they do look at that because they don't really want you to get really bad backlash. Yeah. So they'll protect your interest in that sense. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, it's not like Big Brother where they just kind of want full flow of everything and then when they come out, it's, it's carnage. Yeah. Because you do. You do really have to protect people. You know, anyone who goes in there and then comes out and then they've got some backlash from it and then the public will turn around and say, yeah, but you knew exactly what you were getting yourself into. You do not know what yourself you're getting yourself into. I think when you come out, you don't know what that, like, five minutes of fame is until you you're in it how people are how vicious people can be i didn't get any i didn't really get that much i didn't get backlash i didn't get like bad messages i got a bit but i kind of look past it but it can be it can be really savage on your on mental health like massively um, i can imagine yeah and do, I've, you, go on. do you still speak to anyone from the show from your season no no, no, no. I like occasionally send a message to like a couple of them, but just sort of in passing. If it, like Instagram of something pops yeah, up or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like just stay in contact. Yeah. Yeah, you haven't really, really made any like proper friends from the show as such. Not really, no. No, no, no. 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 Interesting. No, but then I had, look, you make friends and you're still friends with them. But, you know, I had my, my core group of mates and... I didn't, but I didn't want to go to all these events and just constantly be around Love Island. You know, when I came off, it was a bit, it was just a bit much. And I was like, I don't want to be associated with Love Island all the time. Mm -hmm. 
there's more to me than Love Island. 100%, mate, 100%. And I've gotten to know you a bit over the last couple of years and obviously what I might have thought you were going to be like is very different to actually how you're like. Yeah. You know? I think a lot of people say that. That's why when I, you know, I have an in-depth chat with someone afterwards, they go, wow, didn't just from getting to know you, wouldn't have thought you would have done the show. And I was like, yeah, but Weird I did that it. perception, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I even get it from a nightclub owner perspective. Yeah. So they've not met me. They they think this, every nightclub owner is like Al Pacino out of Scarface. Yeah. Then you sit and have dinner with someone. They're like, oh, you're really normal. What the hell did you expect? Yeah. I was going to walk around two bodyguards and two glocks <laughs> and snort a load of cocaine off a side. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not, not everyone's like that. Yeah. Talk to me about social media. So before you went in, did you have a bit of a following then, being a model? I think I had 22,000 followers. Okay. Because you've got this thing, this massive surge of followers. Oh, I'm mad, yeah. And then... You sort of you haven't got your own Instagram when you're in there. Who was who was looking after yours? Did you have anyone looking after it? A friend of mine, yeah, was looking after it. Apparently, didn't do such a good job. So Brad, my sister's fiance, took it, uh, took okay. it on, and then we did great with it. You know, was very active on it. Did like lots of questions and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full time. So my job following now. it is yeah. So social media now is full time job. Mm. So I came out of it and I went into how many followers I get? Nearly seven hundred thousand, I think. Wow. And what, what's that like, mate? Because obviously there's two elements of social media. You just want it to go up and up and up. Well, <laughs> it's, it's super it. predictive, isn't it? And, yeah. and you've got this thing like, even for me or for anyone, everyone's chasing this, the tick. Everyone's chasing yeah. the blue tick and the followers. So you've gone on this show, a sort of aspiring model. You've come out of the show with nearly a million followers and verified, or you got verified when you come back out? I got verified when I came out. What's that like? Are you are you addicted to it a bit? Are you on it all the time? Are you yeah, like you playing to it a bit? You know, like the fact that you're now somebody. Yeah, on you there. do, but um, maybe not even intentionally. I've always struggled with social media. Yeah, we've I had this chat before, actually. Yeah. yeah, you're not. You don't really like posting. I really that struggle with it. I'm not just not one of those people that wants to tell my life from day to day, uh, like hour to hour. Hmm. I, some days I'm, I'm like very vocal on it and I'll get on there, but I'm sort of in the swing of it. And then some days I just don't want to be a part of it. And actually after Love Island, I really struggled with it. I went for a, a year. I don't know if I've said this or not to any people, but, and I'm, I'm very honest about it. I really struggled the year afterwards. I was up and down, couldn't figure out what I wanted. I was, uh, I was pretty much, I was depressed. Hmm. And, um, yeah, I went through the highs and lows. I was going out too much. And I think because of that, obviously you're up and down, you know, you're hung over and, and, and then the social media and I've got my agents telling me, Paul, you get active, you know, you've got to do stuff. And I was like, but what, what am I going to do? I don't really want to talk about it. And I just, I wish I had more guidance in that sense. I'm pretty, I'm savvy and I'm smart enough to know what's, what to do and that, but it is hard doing it yourself. So I, re I just really struggled with it. And I still do now, you know, I, I won't be on it for ages. No. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if you want a lesson on how to lose followers. <laughs> we'll speak to you. Yeah, because I've lost from 700,000, I'm on a, like 380 now or something, 379. Do you think that's just from lack of posting or your shit yeah, I content? Think. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's people follow Love Island and then eventually that dies off mm -hmm. and you lose followers. I think for not posting for a while, I don't know the algorithms of of, of Instagram. <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't have lost so many followers. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think it's when you haven't posted in a while and then suddenly you're, you're, you crop up, people are like, oh yeah, I follow him and then they unfollow you. And uh, it is what it is, you thickle bastards. It is hard. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's You've I'm got just... this element as well, I, I find, with these shows that they dig through old posts from like 10 years ago when you're in a show. Yeah. And then you get hammered for it. Yeah, yeah. You might have said something that was during a time where the lines were a bit more blurred and yeah. was probably more socially acceptable that now probably isn't. Yeah. And then you see people getting kicked off the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of that crop up like yeah, that for you? Or no, you right? no. They're, they're very good with it. So they'll make you sift through all everything you've got. And if there's anything which could like a random tweet come up, or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't realize they did up, that. Yeah, they'll they'll go through all your stuff just because they're looking after your own your your well being. 
And I actually didn't have anything. I think maybe it was one or two, but like very light stuff. Okay. You've come out. You're obviously huge on social media now, but you're also huge as a person publicly. What's it like walking down the street? Everyone running up to you, taking photos. Yeah. How do you cope with that? It was fun and it wasn't. That's what I mean. That's why I think that's why I struggled was because, I mean, I, I was walking down Oxford Street. I couldn't even walk down Oxford Street. It was mental. To get A to B was just an absolute nightmare because everyone wants pictures and everyone wants to talk to you about Love Island and then everyone would come up you. to me. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone comes up to you and they're having a conversation with you and I'm thinking, how do I know you? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like five, ten minutes into a conversation and then you're like, I don't have a clue who you are. You know me from Love Island. Uh, but they're asking you very personal questions, stuff they found about you on the internet or your social media or something like that. So that was a bit, a bit off. But um, yeah, it was when you're out, you know, people like this with with phones all the time. Slightly trying yeah, to. And you're not stupid. If the phone's not pointed on a 45 degree angle, <laughs> someone's taking a picture <laughs> of you. Yeah. <laughs> I always, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, what's the best way to do that? Slightly, I know, yeah. Like, like, and you'd lean see it. back and yawn or something. <laughs> and you'd see it on the train as well. People don't, like the, the windows behind you is a, perfect mirror and you'd see that and then you'd see <laughs> suddenly see it go up uh which you get you know you kind of get a taste of what like actual fame real fame is and i feel i feel sorry for like people that have it all the time mm. i can walk down the road now and people don't know who i am and i've i've, I've savored that it's nice but i if i was to walk down the road now and people know who i am it's because i wouldn't i'd want it to be for the right reason so afterwards i wanted to do and i still want to do it documentary type stuff but in order to help people um for whatever reason it is we've got it's kind of in the pipeline that's but, cool yeah uh and to do that but to really kind of give people insights into into things that is re is real life as opposed to doing this um and you know walking down the street and people just want to talk to me about something which i'm over you know it's four years ago it's a long time mate. yeah a lot's changed and you it? keep bringing it up <laughs> You're my mate, Paul from Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> the um, tabloids, do you have yeah. a bit of a hard time with them after? Yes and no. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't really get that much bad press. There's a couple of people who write journalists uh, can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. And when somebody writes something bad about you, half the time it's, the way that they write it is not exact is not how it is yeah and it's quite savage so when i read press about anyone i just think i i, n I never believe it you believe there's truth in it because i think if you write something about someone there has to be some element of truth journalists can't write completely make-believe stuff now they're not allowed to do it but when you read something you're like where where did you get that information from who's told you such bullshit and well they've got know. to sell stories didn't they yeah, of course, but then it's sad that it's sold on on like back of someone else's yeah, on little porkies. You and I have touched on this before, like the aftercare element of when you yeah. come out of the show. So you said it a minute ago as well. So you've gone from I don't mean this offensively, nothing to huge fame. You've come out and you're at this huge fame level, which obviously you're struggling to deal with, as you said. Yeah, because there's no guidance, is there? Really. When you come out, your agent's trying to peddle you for more money. I'm not saying yours, but that's generally the, what they do. They want to get more money out. The show have kind of forgotten you in those early seasons. Yeah. And you're on your own. Yeah. But in a whole different world. It's a weird one because, you know, you go from, from that and then you come out and then everyone thinks you're suddenly a millionaire. And then... Because you've been on TV. Yeah. And you'd go out and, yeah, you people would expect you to pay for stuff, like, mad. And then... I mean, is the pay good? Not when you're on, not you're on the show. You get two hundred pounds a week or something to pay for your expenses. I live in London; doesn't pay for much. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I remember having a chat with, I think it was Jerry Essex years and years ago. Yeah, season one, and he'd, we'd booked him at Halo as a PA, and I'm, I'm sure he was telling me that originally it was fifty quid an episode or something. They got that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's mad. Like literally, but they know that you can do really well with the other end. Yeah, yeah. Not everyone does. No. You really think how many people that have just faded into the back, me and myself included, but the, something that I wanted, I didn't want to, to put myself out there and be at every show. And then I got asked to do uh, two or three shows afterwards and said no to them. Just wasn't, I just didn't want to be Similar a part of it. Similar reality shows. Yeah. And I just didn't want to be a part of it. It's just, I was like, 
you know, it's not, I'm not getting anything from this. And no offense to anyone else who does it, you know, everyone's got their own path and stick to it and do what you want to do. But for me personally, it wasn't what I wanted to do. And um, yeah, the aftercase, it's not great. You know, no. I'd imagine it's better now than when you did it because of what's happened in between. Yeah. You know, sadly, it takes some tragedies for people to change to change the way that like the protocol. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the aftercare is not amazing. You know, you'll speak to a couple of people, but they don't check up on you. And I th is it their responsibility to? I think maybe to check on you and say that they'll help you. But like anyone, anyone who needs help doesn't cry for help. Yeah. You know, they'll sit and and they'll say that they're okay. And yeah, I think, um, I don't know, there's people around you as well, you know, to really notice if something's, if something's going on with you. Would you say you struggled most when you came out into that fame or when it actually dropped off? Because I do know, obviously, with reality TV, there's this curve, isn't there? Yeah. So you tend to, you know, a few of them stay up there, you know, like Wes Nelson from your season has done very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, killed it. Yeah. So, but, but generally speaking, it's this kind of curve. Yeah. So on the way back down on that curve, would you say it's worse or, or, or did you struggle the most in the top of the curve where effectively you're famous? I think it depends what you want. If you still want to be a part of the, the fame, when it's dropping off, you know, you're struggling. It's almost like, you, you know, you, you're trying to come up for air because you really, you really want something and you're, you're willing to take anything. And you see it from a lot of people that are, are kind of fame, you know, they start doing stuff, which is just pff, that's shit TV for them. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, to try and get themselves in the public eye again. And you see there's a little bit of desperation. And, but then I don't know, I think at, at the top, I think if you're not used to it, that alone is can be quite destructive because it's a lot. It's, it is a lot. It a was lot mad. Of pressure, isn't it? Yeah, it was mad. You, I mean, there's, there's... A friends of mine who have seen it when I, you know, I was out them, and um, uh, I tell you, I, I, one okay, one thing. When I'd come out of it, I was um, I was in this bar, and it was I hadn't seen like loads of friends, girl mates. My sister was there, and when I see them, I'll give them a hug, kiss on the cheek, and this girl. I seen her in the corner of my eye a couple of times. Had her phone up and was trying. I was taking pictures when I was next to a girl, so I was like giving them a hug, and then to try and make it. Yeah, yeah and I, I thought, right, okay, she's done this a couple of times now with a different girl, and we're there with a group of friends. Anyway, I'm outside and with my sister. I'm hugging my sister. I give my sister a kiss. She, this girl comes in again and takes another picture, and I just, I lost it at, in front of everyone as well. And I said, what are you like, what are you doing? I said, you sneaky bitch. You've, you've <laughs> actually come and tried to take photos of me consecutively with different girls. Yeah. What are you trying to do with them? I said, cause these are all my friends and this is my sister. She's like, oh, oh no, I'm not doing anything. And I said, yeah, but you are, well, you, you're trying to take pictures of me. We're going to try and sell that story tomorrow in whatever, yeah. in whatever way you're going to twist this. I said, Savage. you don't actually realize the repercussions that you have. Cause I have to read that. I have to deal with the bullshit that you're going to generate for me and make me look bad for being with a group of friends and she's like oh no sorry and then i called her something else and i was like fuck off yeah you know and understandably people don't realize that they do this and it has very it can have very um serious. detrimental effects to people's lives very serious but people don't care you know i'm not going to change the world by saying it um but sadly people don't learn you were you were older than most of the others going in, right? Yeah, right. As in, <laughs> you know what I mean is, you were arguably at, were you thirty one when you went into the show? Thirty one, yeah. You're a lot more mature, a lot more aware, yeah. a lot more in control at thirty one. I'm just thinking when I was thirty one, only two years ago, unlike you. Um, <laughs> but if you think of some of the nippers that are going in, you look at, older there. at eighteen. That's beard. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old. How are they going to deal with this? What you're talking about? It's like it's tough. It, you know, I'm not saying it was any less tough on you, but you would have been in a much stronger mindset at your age and oh, still struggled with it. Yeah, I think if you're going to look at it psych on a psychological value, I think maybe people, you deal with things different down the line. Like where I was in my life, I dealt with it in a way of what what should I do, be doing? What do I want to do next? I think if I was to do that, 
again, I would like to have been younger so that you could bounce back. I could just ride the wave yeah. and just go with anything, take anything, you know, do whatever came, like came my way. And, you know, I'd be young and... Do you think you were m probably overthinking a lot of it when you came out as well? Yeah, then? yeah, yeah. I was trying to think which which avenue I wanted to take as well. Yeah. And uh, that and sort I, of undecisive thing in life is is quite a I hard really. place to be. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I, I I probably suffer with something that Will Smith talks about in his book called paralysis through analysis. Yeah. I overanalyze everything. Yeah, yeah. And I end up paralyzed. I can't make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm 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 with you on that for sure. You know, if I driving into an empty car park, <laughs> I literally have no idea where to park. <laughs> 20, where's Ty? 20 minutes later, he's, trying to, he's in there. Oh no, he's reversed into there. Oh, no. Yeah, it's mad. But I do overthink things and I I, I know that, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm calculated, which is good and bad at the same time. I think it's good because, you know, I won't rush into something, but I, I think it's bad because you can then create a lot more scenarios and really what, you know, you you just overthink it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to touch on something. You said there was a point when you really struggled and you felt down and you even used the word depressed. Mm. Ever clinically depressed? I, As in, did you go to a doctor? Did yeah, you get I, help? I, did, I, I did actually speak to a doctor. Yeah, it took a lot for me. I'm very, like, headstrong. Mm. And Well, I know that about you. That's why I was asking. I'm quite interested yeah. in that part. And I hide things very well, you know. I'd go out, this was the thing. So I'd go out and I'd be the best of myself. I'd go out and I'm like, good fun, chat to people and just have fun. And you would never know the difference. And then like during, I guess this was kind of when I was coming off from the fame of it. And then you're not getting as much things as you want to. The doors that you want, that had closed previously, you know, you're like, oh, I wanted to work with those companies again. And it's not happening. And so I was, I was in just came in this dark place and then friends would call me up and they'd say like, are you okay? And I'd say, yeah, just kind of lie to it. Lie to myself. Yeah. I think it was me telling myself that I was in a good place. Well, not in a good place, but I was all right. And it just went on and on. And I honestly, if I was completely honest with myself, which it took a while, I was like, fuck, I'm depressed. Need like, I'm really, but yeah, I'm in a, in a pretty bad state here. And I told a couple of people and they were like, wow, I just didn't have a clue. And I was like, yeah, but I hide it well, you know, and I'm, I mask it. I think mask, it was going out and masking it with alcohol. That was exactly what it was because. Vicious cycle. Yeah. It? And it is. And then you'd go out again and then you'd forget it and you'd like Renum be the best it. of yourself. But come I wouldn't go out and be messy. Yeah. yeah. Just go out and, and just have fun with people. But it was a messy cycle and I was completely masking really how I felt. And then I I just decided, I said, right, I'm gonna call up a doctor and then um and then went on some antidepressants and then whether or not they I did I did I wasn't on them for long. But I think in that moment, uh for me was a bit of a wake up call and was like, right, you know, I need to get out of this cycle, get fit and healthy again. Mm. And uh, I think it's amazing that you've been able to recognise that to go and ask for help. So yeah. I think that's ninety nine percent of the battle for most people, isn't it? Yeah, it was Help. hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like waving that white flag. Yeah. Nobody wants to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm very vocal about it now. Whenever I've spoken to anyone about Love Island or afterwards or, you know, in the past couple of years, I'm like, yeah, I went for a really bad place. Mm. And I'm not well, I'm not worried about saying it. You know, if someone's gonna take the piss out of me for it, well pff, who are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think it's better to, to to say it. And I've come out of the other side. You know, there are still moments where, you know, you're like... You're ups and downs. Yeah, you're ups and downs. But yeah, I've come out of the bad place I was in. Mm. I just didn't know how to get out of it. Um, and I think when, you know, when you're depressed, you know it. Mm. Talk, I mean, talking about it is, is half the battle. Yeah. Youngsters nowadays that are watching those shows or or that are part of that sort of Instagram thing we were talking about, I think it's really important that they hear from people like yourself that have been on the show, lived experience, because it's very easy for a 50-year-old doctor to sit there and tell you to do X, Y, and Z with your life. But as yeah. you know, we tend to take advice better from people that have either lived it or people that are close to us, around yeah. us that we trust. As People always push back to authority a bit, don't they? So I think... 
Yeah, I think <sighs> yeah, we actually had this conversation about something in the car, and, and I was like, do you know what? Everything's kind of okay. Like to never make the worst of a situation. If someone describes in what they've done or something bad about them, it's it's actually okay. It's not going to be the end of the world for them, and you try and figure out a way in which to help them whatever that may be but i think it's trying to level with someone you can't you don't have the answers for everyone you know it really is true like obviously when you're going to see a therapist not that i've seen them but you have the answers to to really what is going on but you just need to figure it out that's what they you help know? you with right and it, i think it's an old school th thing where you say figure shit out you know but you need you need help along the way yeah but you need I think we all need mentors. I think you all need someone to speak to who's going to try and help you in that way and not judge your actions, not judge what you're doing hmm. uh, and just trying to find a way out of it. When you came off the antidepressants? Yeah. I mean, I did like one course. I think I just tried it. Or let's say when you come out of that dark place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything you changed to try and stay out of there? Whether that be lifestyle, you know food, me, training, diet, I don't know, people you were with? Yeah, for me, I think it was more of a case that I went on that when I was taking them and was a bit of a, a wake up call to myself thinking, do I really need these? I can change aspects of my life, which would help me. First of all, was the one of going out all the time yeah, and get back into shape and uh, just be more, pro I was so proactive years ago. I mean, I, I, I still am now, as long as I'm in that frame of mind. But I was hungry and I wanted stuff and I was traveling and I was like, you know, wherever I was, I was networking. Yeah. And I thought, right, I'm going to change the aspects of my life in order to get these back. And I think those pills were a bit of a sign for me to to get my arse in gear and sort it out. And I know it's not the same for everyone, but that was for me. So that's why I didn't continue with them. And I thought, I don't, I don't need these, you know. Million dollar question. Do you regret going on the show? Mm, don't know. No regrets, eh? Well, th this is this is it. Yeah. What? Do I get a million? Not quite. But no, I don't know. Do I regret going on it? I just think there was a lot. Of, you know, there's a lot of things I would change, but I, you know, I did it at the time for a reason. No, don't regret that. You know, I think. This regret piece is funny, right? Because I was chatting to someone about this the other day. At the time that you make the decisions we all make, yeah. at the time we made them, you did at it that because point, you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. With everything you had available to you, you felt it was the right choice. Yeah, totally. It's easy to look back now, going, "Oh, I shouldn't I have done that. that." Yeah, we like we change as you get older, but of there's, course, there's always going to be things that you regret. There are things in my life that I do regret, and I shouldn't. Have, I think shouldn't have done that and even at the time should have thought differently but you know it is what it is you can't yeah. change it um i don't know i do believe that everyone will have regrets you know this whole no regrets thing yeah yeah yeah. i do believe that everyone has regrets i think so um but as long as you learn from it then that's fine i think the, i think it depends which way you your mindset is because you're i have regrets yeah when i think of them with my actions, I think, oh, they're a regret. But I purposely program my brain yeah. to not see them as a regret. And I'm thinking, actually, that made me who I am. I learned this from that. Yeah. It, well, that's good, because like, then that's like the glass half full. You know, you yeah. try to take the good from it. But, but really, it's a regret, if, I, if I'm being truly and totally honest. Yeah, yeah, because you're not happy about how you did it. No. Looking yeah. back now, I'm not happy. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. You, potato, potato, there's, someone's going to have their, their argument on this and say, like, no regrets and they don't believe in it. But... So anyone that gets in anyone that would have an opportunity to go on a show like this then you yeah. wouldn't necessarily say don't do it as your advice it would be what would they get out of it is that what you tell them to consider i have i've spoken to a few people even that um, recently yeah even a couple of people that were going on it they they uh, reached out to me and and asked me and the same thing yeah i'll say what what do you want from it what are you trying to achieve from it and i'll try and give them advice on what they're saying what they should do once they come out of it because i think you can come out of it and be in limbo and you should probably have an end goal because you can do really well from this yeah well you can't do really well from the show or any of those shows any show yeah. but you have to have the right people around you
for sure, mate. Net, I think that network thing is really important. Your support network, really, really important. Yeah. They drive you that, you know, they say you're a um, average of the five people you spend your most of your time with, you know, all yeah. these kind of things. And as cliche as they are, there's some real big truths in them. I've even noticed in my own life over the last five years, your circle slightly change. And you get this whole thing of you've that changed. That in a podcast with someone that was on Love Island four years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be seen dead with you back then. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. But you've, um, these sort of elements of you change, you grow. And if the people aren't growing, then you, you sort of move on. And you get this piece from people you might have been at school with or whatever, where they're like, you've changed, you've changed. Well, I have changed. I'm developing and I'm growing as a person, hopefully for the positive. So if you're standing where you are, I'm not necessarily dropping you. I'm just, our minds don't align. Our targets, our vision, or what we want from life isn't the same anymore. I'm not saying they're not my mate, but you just, you might not hang around with them. You yeah. know what I mean? You must have groups of people that you've switched from. from yeah, there is. I think the time when I was going out a lot, was the realization afterwards was that i need to probably stop reaching out to them as much and vice versa just doing what was right for me yeah you've um, got to be selfish a bit haven't you yeah you do the thing is i've got such an array of friends i've got party friends and i've got super sensible friends i've got very wealthy friends i've got like whatever an array of friends and i think I get on with anyone, but there are elements which, you know, you know, which have been detrimental to your own life where you have to, you just have to be realistic with yourself. Yeah. That's a hard, it's a hard, it's, you know, facing yourself in the mirror <laughs> as much as you it's love a bit it. Of a, it's a bit of a cliche. <laughs> you love it. Yeah, all right. It's a bit of a cliche, but if you ever actually look at yourself in the mirror and to tell yourself, sort yourself out, I think it, it probably does have a little bit of an impact quite intimidating looking at yourself in the mirror and trying not to lie mm. i read david goggins's book last year yeah and uh he talks about that the i can't remember what he calls it the something mirror anyway and i was feeling a bit shit about something and i actually did exactly that i went upstairs and i got in front of the mirror looked at myself in the eyes and started like talking to myself yeah claudia was downstairs she's like everything all right up there what the hell is going on yeah. i'm basically having a go at myself but it, it genuinely sorted me out a little yeah. bit. I don't know if it's placebo. I was staring in the mirror, shouting at myself, like g myself up, woke up next day well, and I sort of snapped thing. out of it. Yeah, look, you know when you're like, you're thinking about something, you shouldn't do that, and you think, nah, no, I can do that. It's this, you know, the, the devil and the angel on your shoulder. I think when you look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself something that you don't want to do, I think it is, it's quite impactful. Mm. Uh, Definitely. And you can't look, you know, you can't look away. Definitely. From what's <laughs> my waffling on. From what's staring you in the face. I think you can't lie to it because there's actions oh no, I don't know what I'm saying. No, no, I hear you. So I hear what you're saying. What are you doing now then? What's what's the future hold for you? What are you up to now? Still work work modeling? wise. Still do modelling. I don't do loads of it. No one wants me anymore. <laughs> oh yeah oh, yeah well, no still do bits and pieces i don't i just don't put too, too much effort into it i think to do going back to this modeling thing it, if you want it you have to really want it you have yeah. to put a lot of time in it. it's a lot of like self-advertising so i still do bits and pieces i still do get on the carpentry every now and then do you on the tools yeah on the tools go on mush yeah and well, as soon as i up. tell people yeah <laughs> <laughs> so back to yeah, the sort that. of modeling vibe yeah, I look after a few properties, um, just fingers in different pies. I've started something up with my brother-in-law and another guy. Nice. Yeah, we've done that. And I'm actually doing a course in something. I'm not going to say what it is yet because I want to. I've already done half of it. But I want to get to the end and then. Nice. A bit of a career change. It, yeah, sort it is. Of. Yeah, it's not something that I thought I would do, but. It's something that is is good. It's it can be very lucrative, and uh, I just think it's a bit of a niche. Nice, but I'm not purposely saying what it is because I've I've done that over the years where I've started something new. I've spoken about it, and then it doesn't materialize, and then I've given myself a hard time about yeah. it. Yeah, Nothing you know, because you're disappointed in yourself, and then you seem less legit when you speak to someone because they're like, oh, how's that going? And you're like, oh yeah, it didn't it didn't fall through. 
Never actually happened. Yeah. yeah so um, there. I'm doing this. Yeah. And I'm not going to say what I've done until it's until it's done. I mean, you wearing this vest probably brings us on nicely to your uh, some of your hobbies. One of them being horse riding. <laughs> How has this been, a horse rider? Well, I think you look like a horse rider. Oh, right. From Texas. Why horse riding? Now, you keep trying to drag me out there. What do you enjoy about it? Is it the nature Basically, element? Basically, I love animals. Like, love animals. Which is why I don't eat meat. I was actually just going to say, do you eat them? No. No, okay. no, no. I haven't done for years now. Do you love animals? Yeah, so love animals. And I've... <clears throat> I've always seen on TV, I've seen actors and just had the, like the G on horses. I'm like, that is amazing. And uh, my dad was an amazing horse rider. And I thought I've always just wanted to be an amazing horse rider. So I started horse riding, but I've actually found out, you know, there's that hobby, you know, when someone goes, find out something you like, what do you like doing? Yeah. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out. And then I got on a horse and that is my, honestly, that is my therapy for an hour or and two hours that I go out. It's my therapy. No phone. <laughs> Sounds a bit cliche, but you are kind of at one with a horse. Yeah. And you just and stop nature. thinking about, yeah, nature. And you just stop thinking about stuff. And it's uh, it's amazing. And then when you become better on a horse, when you can actually ride a horse, it's such good fun. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. It's massive, mate. I had a go, didn't I, last year on the, at San Polo for charity. Oh, uh, what? You, what? <laughs> <laughs> the apes, you, they, you sat on the horse they put and me someone on the horse. just pulled you around. <laughs> they sat me on this massive horse. And I had to go round the thing, but it just... Wasn't there oh, someone walking? Yes, yeah, so it was very slow, <laughs> don't get me wrong. But obviously it's an animal, isn't it? So it's it's not like sitting on a, you know, I ride a motorbike as, as you do. It's noth It was nothing like that. It's like a weird boat, yeah, yeah. soft motion. I right think that's, that's part and parcel of it. I think it's, uh, you really do have to be somewhat connected mm -hmm. and in control. It's not, it's just, it's something that I do that I've, I've I love the hobby. A um, couple of things I want to touch on. Yeah. Don't know if you've talked about them or not. Yeah, <laughs> One is a certain someone in the States that you might have been dating. Oh, uh, no, I didn't date her. You didn't date her? No. What happened then? <laughs> I'm not talking about this. You don't want to talk about it? No. I'm not can no. I say her name? Yeah, you can say it, but I'm just going to say we're not talking about it. Did you love her? No. She was, right, this is all I'm going to say about it. Go on then. And I worked with her, became like friends afterwards. She's Worked really, with her what? How did you work with her? I did a music video with her. Got you. Yeah, so I was her lead guy. And we became friends afterwards. And she's, she was, she's really, she's actually a really lovely girl. Yeah. She's, um, yeah, really sweet. She's down to earth. She's, I know what people what is portrayed about her and what you see but from my side of things when i spoke to her she's just very family orientated and she's very sweet and still stay it. in touch no just for all you listeners and viewers i'm talking about britney spears <laughs> big name that was a big name when i was growing up Boom. yeah i mean for me wow <laughs> surreal huh yeah it was a little bit yeah what music video are you in by the way make me i think i remember that I didn't know you though at the time. Yeah, no, you didn't. Yeah, make me. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Mental. I think uh, the, more so the crazy thing was I was at, was at Universal Studios. It was one of the first jobs I got when I was in LA. Yeah, and I remember in the casting studio they said I knew it was for Britney Spears, but my agent said don't say that. And they said, oh, what girls are you into? And I said, oh, classically brunettes, because I knew it was her. Threw him off the scent. Yeah, and I, I think. That was all got probably got me the job. And uh yeah, I think it was more so the fact that yeah, it was one of my first jobs. It was Universal Studios, then got picked for the lead guy, and then Massive. I'm like, yeah. Massive. And then I'm kissing you... Britney Spears on a music video. Yeah. That's <laughs> like <laughs> what is going on here? The LA Dream. <laughs> Mate, that must have been crazy. Arguably bigger than the surely bigger than the Love Island thing. In terms of like for a pinch, was, yeah. pinch me moment. Yeah, for uh, for sure. For me it was, yeah. Global superstar. Well, not you, know. her. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, I even questioned it when you said that. You you spent a bit of time in LA. Yeah, I lived in LA for a while, yeah. Any decent parties you went to? 
trying to get out of this Playboy Mansion party. <laughs> <laughs> I know you farted in the Playboy Mansion. Any comments on that, yeah. Mr. Knops? Do you know what? Sadly, it was a little bit um, disappointing. Really? Yeah. From all the stories that I'd heard over the years, it's changed. I think it was more of um, an advertising thing with that now. You know, people go and they, they buy tables and it's expe they're expensive. Yeah. But I got invited, so I did a job for Playboy in Vegas. And uh, two of the girls there, they were the Playboy models and their agent. And they said they were talking about their Playboy party. And then I was like, in in the background, I said, please, <laughs> please, can I come to this party? Imagination going wild. Yeah, I thought, I just would love to have gone there, innocently. Of course. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, they said you can come. So I, I went there with a friend. And it was a bit of a ball like getting there. And then, honestly, it was fun. We, you go around, we looked at the, his, the, his like, his, his monkey pet zoo whatever yeah. and then it was fun and then we went in the grotto and stuff like that but it's not like it used to be uh where i think it was like a lot more promiscuous it wasn't like that at all it was a party and then before you knew it i think i was at the bar maybe it was like half past one just the music shut off and i was like no nah, this isn't it surely and then it what, was they just bit, kicked everyone out yeah, and then everyone yeah made a haste for these um these coaches that took you to another place to get your your cars and stuff and not don't get me wrong it was fun it was a fun cool experience there. probably yeah it was a cool like definitely a cool experience to to go to the play much in uh but and it was actually it went because it was rumored to be one of their last parties because he wasn't in a very good way so i was like definitely. what year is this when are we when are we talking this was 2018 2018 no 2018 2017 because obviously now you've got all the some of the girls are coming forward about like some of their experiences in there and some of them wrote books. I think my missus was reading one the other day. What, from what? Playboy Mansion? Yeah. Oh, really? Some of them are pretty crazy from what she was explaining. But oh, it doesn't sure. sound like, yeah. Well, I'm sure. Well, that's like that whole LA thing's a bubble as well. You yeah. Know? I th it's all of that. It's a completely a... different world. You party in the hills quite a bit then. Yeah. Yeah, different when I was world, there. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It kind of is what you almost expect it to be or what you see. You know, you go up in the hills, there's these cool parties, but... Everyone's there, who's who? Yeah, I mean, you see... Yeah, you see famous people all the time. It's, like, it's it's cool, but I think it, it serves a purpose for a for a time in your life. Yeah. It's yeah. not something that I wanted to live there for a while. Well, I, did, I wouldn't really want to live there now. I think it'd be... And LA would be amazing if you had loads of dough. Yeah. And really, LA, you've got um, Malibu and the hills. Yeah. The rest is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we drove through LA in the actual downtown, I was told not to put my windows down or unlock my doors or stop at yeah. certain street corners. Yeah, yeah. So what you imagine LA to be wasn't, wasn't yeah. like that for me. Yeah, I think, yeah, for me now, I wouldn't want to live there, but it is cool. Um, and you, I think, yeah, you've, you've got to have a bit of money whilst you go there because yeah. you really enjoy it. It's kind of like London, really. You know, if you don't really want to be in London, if you've got... It's a struggle if you don't have money or you're not earning money because you can't really benefit from from what it offers. Yeah. It's a rich man's playground. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Not One last topic man. I want to touch on before we... Call it quits. Yeah, call it quits. Toad. Oh, yeah, Toad, yeah. Talk to me about Toad. Okay. You've done Toad. Yeah. It's a psychedelic. So it is, yeah. It's a DMT and it's... It's off a toad's back. It's what, the poison. So it's, yeah, it's the po poison off a toad's back. Now it's the strongest hallucinogenic. Yeah, you can do. So a lot of people have heard of ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've had a, a guest on that's, that's done it quite a few times. Yeah, that's a purge. Okay, um, but also hallucinogenic. Now this DMT is the strongest hallucinogenic you can do. And in order to do it, you do it with a shaman. Yeah. The whole point of this is not. It's not like a drug. It's not to get off your head or um, it's not certainly not a sociable drug or anything or yeah, medicine. Yeah. It's actually medicine. It's yeah. not a drug. Plant medicine or yeah. whatever, as they call it, alternative medicine. And it's, um, you know, I did it. The reason why I did it was because I, I, th I think we, we're on this planet and a lot of people just go through daily lifestyle and don't think about anything else. They just go from, they like, to do work 
go out, whatever. And there's so much more. And I think, I I just think there's more out there. And I think to I discover ourselves, there's so much we don't know. And so I was just really keen to do this and wanted to find out more about myself. What, what's out there? What's the possibility? You know, is there something on the next life? Basically, your body releases DMT when you're born and when you die. Yes, I've read that. I've seen yeah. That. And so when you do this, it's almost an experience. And I don't say this lightly. It's almost like you're dying, but in the most, it's the most be beautiful, euphoric yeah. experience. Uh, you you kind of, you do one inhalation of smoke. Yeah. And then you, that's it. And then you're out and then you see these geometric shapes. Um, very significant, very overwhelming, but. And then you're out for like 40 minutes or Is whatever. that how long it generally is a trip? Yeah, I think some people are less, some people are not. But you, when you come around, you see stuff in, like you see a 4K TV, you see stuff in like 10K. I mean, you, it sounds, to most people this will sound ridiculous, but it's not. You look at a tree and you can see that the tree is emitting life. It's so profound. Wow. It's so profound. And... It just gives you a different aspect on life. And I think you you then walk away thinking differently about stuff. You know, I've spoken, I've spoken to my mum about this and she goes, well, what did you get out of it? You know, have you changed? It's not really like that. It's not that you suddenly, Eureka, I've changed. I'm a different person. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I think it just allows you, gives you a different headspace mm -hmm. to think about things that maybe you want, what's important to you, what you've seen, um, I, I honestly think everyone should do it, uh, but it's like, it's no joke. I mean, <laughs> would you do it again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do it a hundred times over. It's something that I've sort of been tinkering with for a few years in terms of my head level. Yeah. I want to give it a go. I want to give it a go. I've got some friends going out in June to Portugal Yeah, for something similar for five days. Yeah. I've got friends that have done ayahuasca and I'm just sort of like, oh, yeah. I? But I'm afraid of being in my own head for that long. <laughs> And not being able to get out of like a black, scary sort of like bad trip. <laughs> I very much am in my own head. I find it hard to let go about anything. When I was doing acting, I found it hard to cry. I like, why can you cry? I just find it hard to really let go. And this, I control it. I think, right, I'm doing this. I'm um, sat here. I'm fine. I can figure this out. And then it just, it takes over. But in a good way. Yeah. If you, I don't know if you've ever gone under local anaesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that bit where you're like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not going to go. Yeah, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. You, go, you count down. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. There's no, You can't get out of it. It just happens. But this, Maybe is, it's this the is a different... losing control thing that I'm scared of, I guess. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why I don't really get drunk anymore. Mm. I feel like I have like two drinks, maybe out of town, but I'll have two drinks and I'll have a bottle of water. I have yeah. two drinks. When I feel like I'm sort of losing that control a bit, I want to straighten back up, so... yeah. That's one of the reasons why I actually want to do it because it's something, anything I feel like in life that you're a little bit afa afraid of, you should tackle it head on. I'm a massive advocate of that. I think anything, yeah, that you're, yeah, anything that you're, you're scared of or worried about, do it. Yeah. Like, why not? But, you know, this is something people don't want to do because it's a medicine and it's it's intense. So people are scared of it. But when you do it, you realize how beautiful it is and like anything it can be something really simple in life but this is these are things i like to do because i like to discover myself and find yeah. out a little bit more kind of looking for that next thing whatever it is and i it's oh, you just can't there's no way you can describe it when it was described to me i then said that doesn't even touch the surface of, of what, what you go through. Done it. doesn't even touch the surface like wow. there's no way you describe it if i yeah I believe if you were there for the if you believe the world started with the big bang i was there for the creation like that's where your mind goes it's it's, it's insane it is fascinating yeah you should try it i don't say that lightly <laughs> <laughs> maybe i will one day i'm like kind of and the, the jeff i had on the guest that's done ayahuasca quite a lot you yeah. know he's put, like talks about how it helped him heal his depression and loads of stuff yeah you know he sort of said i was like when do you know when, when's the right time? And he it was like, it'll call you. It's a healer for depression. It is a healer. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, it's a medicine for, for addicts, for all sorts, for, yeah. for depression. Anxiety, yeah, yeah, all this yeah. Kind of stuff. So I've done loads of research online. It's just like, 
It's one of them ones where you want someone to hold your hand and come with you. Yeah. It's one of those ones, yeah. but maybe one day. But then I wanted to do it. I didn't want to be around people because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be seen or watched. I just wanted to have my own experience. Yeah. And, you know, that's what it was. And well, it's, it's quite literally mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> that's mental. Love it. Mate, thank you so much for coming down. Thanks for having me. I hope it was a somewhat interesting chat. It was indeed.